our son was diagnosed with thanatophoric dysplasia type 2, um, which it was a form of dwarfism where half the bones in his body stopped growing about halfway through the pregnancy. So I ended up having Nathan um, 17 minutes after he was born, he died. It was almost immediate. I started to question God, like, well, why me? Like, I pray, I talk to you every day, and you take my son away from like, what did I do to deserve this? Yeah, I just started to blame her. It's your fault that we don't have a child now because you didn't do what you were supposed to do during this stage or during that stage and led us to both just drowning all of that with, you know, just drinking uncontrollably because we didn't know how to deal with that. There was a lot of hurt and pain that we both were dealing with, I think personally and towards each other. And, um, and so coming to Charlotte, it was just like, I mean, we were just picking up our baggage and bringing it with us. Two years had passed after the birth and death of our second son. We sat down and agreed to try to have another baby. Three miscarriages later, it was back at the same place again. I'm like, I'm done, I'm not, I'm done. At that moment when we stopped trying, we were pregnant. Once I found out it was a healthy baby, that's when I told my husband. And so when she told me, I was, you know, I was eyes big. <laughs> okay, we gotta stay on top of everything. Make sure you take your vitamins. Make sure you go to the doctor. Make sure you do everything that you're supposed to do so that we don't have any gray area when we go to the doctor. She never really fully walked away from God like I did, but she always prayed. And after we had the baby, she was encouraging, now we need to start going back to church. You know, we're gonna have two kids. And the way that we're living our life right now is just not the lifestyle that I would want them to think is okay. My mom told us about Elevation Church. You know, the University City at the time was at the YMCA. And she was, she's on fire for the Lord. And I was like, oh, okay, great, you know, sure. We drive up to the parking lot. I get out of the car, and it was just a different feel. You know, everybody's, hey, welcome to Elevation, They're slapping hands, hugging, and different things like that. And I was just like, you know, kind of not even hugging back because I'm just like, I don't think I should be receiving this amount of affection from somebody that doesn't know where I've walked. I felt like I was more receptive to the love and to the welcoming, and I felt like he was more standoffish. But I, like that just gave me more motivation to like, yeah, hey, look at him, come get him, you know? I felt welcome. I felt like, you know what, even though it's different, I, I really enjoyed the, the environment and the experience. The worship itself was just completely overwhelming. Race to Life, the actual song spoke to me so, so much. Singing that song and crying, and I had no choice but to raise my hand and stand up and walk that walk to get baptized. When they made the call for baptism, and he stood up, and his dad stood up, and his brother stood up, I was just really overcome with emotion. The night before, I remember going to bed crying just because the state of our marriage, and just praying that God either change him or change me to deal with who he is and where he is. And so to see him without me nudging, I was just very overcome with emotion and just so grateful that, that God spoke to him without me, you know, having to bug him about it, you know. The fact that God met all three of us right there in that moment, it just, you know, it's like, I'm here, God. I know that you're there. Here I am, I'm back. Until we put God at the center, it just, it wasn't gonna work. In the moment that we did, the moment that we surrendered and gave it all to God, it was just instantaneous. No, I'm not perfect, and no one's ever going to be. Yes, I have a past. Me realizing that allowed me to fully accept that that's who I was. And even more so, it's allowed me to embrace who I am now and where I'm going. So now I worship with an open heart, fully receiving everything that God has to offer me. I lead with a high level. I pray for people every day, every chance that I get. No matter how I see myself, 
or how I think the world views me. It has nothing to do with how God sees me. And no matter the sin, the shame, the guilt that I feel, He still loves me. I would never imagine that we are where we are looking back a few years ago, but just to know that we are here and it's all through God's grace and His love and His mercy. It gives me so much hope because I know that no matter what we go through, we've been through worse and we've gotten through it. And, and God's got something for us. There's always something better. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Elevation Plus. We consider you part of our EFAM, which is our online family. That's right, so make sure you are liking, subscribing, sharing Elevation Plus, and come back here so you can find out more about great stories, yep. great creative elements, and also join us every week for Coffee Fam. That's right.